Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Rugged Medicine YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to discuss the Deadly Dozen, which you can guess is probably not a good thing. The Deadly Dozen is spoken of in thoracic trauma, and if you think about thoracic trauma, significant thoracic trauma or thoracic injuries can be divided into two categories, broadly speaking, and those are immediately life-threatening and potentially life-threatening, and that is where the Deadly Dozen comes in. The Deadly Dozen is the summary of those 12 things that are likely to uh, immediately kill a patient with thoracic trauma or are going to have the potential to kill a patient with thoracic trauma. And they are known as the Lethal Six and the Hidden Six, adding up together as the Deadly Dozen. So the Lethal Six, airway obstruction, not limited to thoracic trauma of course, and airway obstruction is immediately life-threatening. If not fixed, regardless of the cause, that is immediately life-threatening. Tension pneumothorax. In other words, air in the pleural space. Between the two pleura, air comes in, what is colloquially known as a collapsed lung. So when there's significant enough, significant enough pressure or sufficient pressure to push a lung or allow a lung not to fully expand any longer and then have systemic consequences, that is a tension pneumothorax. A simple pneumothorax, by the way, is not immediately life-threatening. Cardiac tamponade, also known as a pericardial tamponade, that is when the pericardial sac fills up with blood, uh, decreasing the ability of the heart to contract and expand, therefore can be immediately life-threatening and requires intervention. Open pneumothorax, so in other words, open as uh, is a clue, it is an open passage between the outside and the inside, therefore within the chest pressures cannot be maintained or negative pressure or positive pressure is not possible, therefore directly inhibiting uh, gaseous exchange and uh, inflation and deflation of the lung, therefore that is potentially immediately life-threatening. Massive hemothorax, hemothorax of course is blood within the thorax and massive a lot of bleeding, a lot of blood, therefore that will affect circulation and gaseous exchange, so respiration and ventilation, and therefore is immediately life-threatening. And flail chest, which is when two or more ribs are fractured in two or more places, sometimes also three or more ribs fractured in three or more places, depending on the definition. So these six are the ones that are uh, immediately life-threatening. The hidden six are the ones that have the potential to um, cause death, but are not automatically an immediate problem. So, thoracic aortic disruption. In other words, the aorta within the chest has, has damage to it, and of course that depends on the size of it. If it is only a minor amount of damage, of course, that is not immediately life-threatening, but if that is not addressed, then that's going to kill the patient. Tracheobronchial disruption, in other words, between the bronchus, the mainstem bronchus that goes then dissects via the carina into the left and right lung and is of course connected to the trachea. If that gets disrupted, so torn apart through uh, force, through trauma, that of course doesn't have to immediately be life-threatening, but over time the ability to do effective gaseous exchange is going to be affected. So it is still deadly, but not immediately. Myocardial contusion, in other words, a bruised myocardium, simply put. So that is force being exerted onto the chest and therefore the heart being bruised, therefore it can't function effectively and that will over time of course decrease cardiac output. That will, then the body will no longer be able to compensate with heart rate and stroke volume increases and therefore it is also going to lead to death. Traumatic diaphragmatic tear, so that is a tear within the diaphragm. Again, having a damaged diaphragm is not immediately deadly because the patient can still breathe, the patient can still compensate, but over time that is going to become deadly as well through various mechanisms. Esophageal disruption, so if the esophagus is damaged, um, that again is not immediately life-threatening, but depending on where things go that would come up the esophagus, such as acid and gastric contents, and also bleeding and infection and various other things that can be linked to it. And pulmonary contusion, in other words, a bruised lung, simply speaking. And that, of course, again, affects gaseous exchange. The body can compensate. Eventually, that can't compensate any longer, or significant amount of blood could be lost so that it's not actually functioning anymore. And therefore, that will also lead to death in the longer term, not in the immediate one. So that is a summary of the lethal six and the hidden six, aka the deadly dozen. 
If you're interested in looking at some guidance, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence here in the UK has got guidance on major trauma. And you'll see a screenshot here of the assessment and initial management. So this is the recommendation section of that guidance, NG39. It was last updated in February 2016 and gives you uh, a summary of each of the sections you can see here. Uh, destination recommendations, airway management, and various other that we discussed. And that is in line with what is most likely to kill the patient either immediately or in the long term, how that should be managed. I hope that you found this insightful and interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.